Hey guys, so first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for all the support and the kind words of encouragement from my first video blog. Um, I was so overwhelmed by the amount of positive response and community that began. The support that you guys showed me, the support that you guys showed each other, women who were sharing their stories and, and moments of vulnerability in the comments section, on my Instagram, on my Twitter. Um, thank you so much for sharing and that is the whole point of why I want to do these video blogs. So on that note, uh, I'm doing this next blog because I feel like this was the topic that kind of came up from my first blog, breastfeeding. Um, I quickly made a comment in my first video that I you know, wanted to share a whole journey about breastfeeding lightly. And I got so many texts and comments about, please, please, please do this video blog. So um, I am by no means an expert on breastfeeding, although I am an expert on what my breasts have been through. So uh, that's what I'm going to share with you today and hopefully my journey will give you a little bit of insight if you're interested or curious about breastfeeding, if you've been through breastfeeding. Um, I'll share some of the things that I learned along the process. The first thing is I was always really interested in breastfeeding. I have a bunch of friends with kids and they all breastfed their kids and I never really paid attention to how long or if they struggled um, because I was Auntie Mel for the longest time. I never really identified with it because I wasn't on that journey yet and it just seemed like it was a very natural thing and it, everyone makes you believe that breastfeeding is a very natural process. Um, so before Cameron was born, I actually went to a breastfeeding support group in my neighborhood. Um, I just wanted to see what other moms were going through. I wanted to learn things because I was really dedicated and wanted to commit to breastfeeding. When Cameron was born, what they didn't tell me was women who have a c-section tend to have a harder time for their milk to come in because you didn't have a vaginal birth you don't release the hormone that triggers your milk to come in right away whereas vaginal births do that now in the beginning stages of breastfeeding what the baby will get is colostrum which is like a you know the, the pre-milk before your milk comes in my milk did not come in by the time i left the hospital so that was four days and Cameron had already lost over a pound. Now mind you, he was a big baby, he was nine pounds, so to go down to just under eight wasn't the worst thing, but the pediatrician was saying, hey, you know, you might wanna supplement because if your breast milk doesn't come in sooner, um, he may lose some more weight and we need to keep his weight up in these first few weeks. So I got home, my mom was here, Jared was here, um, and you know, I was breastfeeding what I thought was breastfeeding. I mean, up every hour, on demand, hour after hour after hour as a newborn needs to feed. There were times I was frustrated and I was crying because it was painful. I mean, if you are not used to anyone feeding from your breasts your whole life, your breasts need a little adjustment period, okay? I'm just warning you from now. Get yourself some good ointment, some good lanolin ointment, uh, get some coconut oil, get, get things that are going to help soothe your breasts. You know, it was day seven and Cameron was still losing weight and um, Jared and my mom were both like, hey, you know, he seems really hungry. Maybe we should give him formula. And when you are breastfeeding, you have no idea how much your baby is getting. Like you, you have no idea. And especially if you're a first time mom and you don't know what breastfeeding is like, you really don't know how much your baby is supposed to be getting either. So by day seven, I mean, they were saying to me, why don't you give the baby formula? He seems hungry. And I was so stubborn. I was so set on breastfeeding and waiting for my milk to come in that I was like, no, I'm committed to keeping it most natural and committed to keeping it breast milk only. And by day seven, my child was hungry and not gaining weight. So I had to supplement. Jared and I up one night all night researching what we thought would be the best formula for Cameron. Um, and you know, my plan was to supplement with formula while pumping milk. And so I could start to see how much milk I was producing and giving it to him either via a bottle or a spoon. So I finally gave in and we got a great organic, um, as natural as possible formula for Cameron and gave it to him. And it was, like night and day, a night and day baby. I mean, he was instantly happier, 
instantly calmer. And I felt horrible because I realized that all week I was starving my child and had no idea. Um, and of course he's crying and I think, oh, that's what a baby does. And of course I'm crying because I'm a new mom and I don't know what the hell I'm doing yet. So I just figure that's par for the course. No, he was hungry. So we supplemented with formula. Now my plan was to supplement with formula until my milk came in and then take him off the formula. That didn't go again. <laughs> um, I started researching so much more because I was so concerned that he wouldn't want my breast milk by the time it came in. Now my breast milk took almost a week and a half to come in, which is a long time. Some women I've read can go two weeks, some women I've read can go a month. I eventually had to find the rhythm of pumping milk, breastfeeding, and giving formula. We went for our two-week appointment, we got his birth weight back up, which is the goal, to by two weeks to get your baby back up to their birth weight, and we did and beyond, so we were on the right track, and um, shortly after that, I experienced a blockage in breastfeeding with my breasts and that was one of the most painful things. I could barely hold Cameron, much less get him to latch on. So I continued to supplement formula and I continued to pump and put him on as best as I could. I went to the doctor, I took Advil to release the inflammation, um, heat compresses to release the inflammation and um, you know, did my best. But that affected my supply and my supply went down. Um, now I still have a newborn that needs to eat and fortunately I found a system of bottles and a formula that he really seems to like and do well on. So I continue to give him the formula and continue to breastfeed. So now once I got past that hump, we're at the three month mark now and I finally feel like we've gotten a rhythm. Um, you know, he feeds every three hours, sometimes two and a half, which is on demand and it's crazy because like I said in the first video blog, he screams like a banshee when he's hungry and there's just no chill for him at all. So I have to be prepared to whip my boobs out or have a bottle ready to go. And now we're at the point where I always start my feeds off with breastfeeding and because he's a big baby and he's hungry, I supplement the rest with formula until he kind of says no more or um, you know, I know he likes to eat a certain amount of ounces. Every baby is different. And uh, I kind of feel like we've gotten that rhythm. Um, it took me three months to figure it out. And you know, I don't know how long I, I'm gonna breastfeed. I'll plan to breastfeed as long as I possibly can. And you know, there's this big debate with how long you should breastfeed because yes, to answer my title question, breast milk is best. There is so much nutritional value that comes from the mother to build the baby's immune system, um, to start giving them that natural nutritional value, and to kind of keep the harsh realities of grown-up food away from them as long as possible. Um, but you know what? It's not the end of the world if you don't breastfeed your baby. I wasn't breastfed. In fact, a lot of my friends were breastfed, and we're all still here, healthy and happy and successful and intelligent. and. You know, I feel like there's a lot of pressure now more so to breastfeed because of the nutritional values we're aware of. Back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, I mean, our moms were progressive women going to work and formula was the easiest thing. It was like a matter of convenience. It's like, here, you can be progressive. You can have a career. Give your baby formula and it's all good. Um, and it was a matter of convenience. Uh, my mom even called me the other day and told me how proud she was of me because I've been so committed to breastfeeding and you know she wishes she had the resources to know the process of what breastfeeding was when I was a kid and when my brother was a kid. So you know it, it's it's a different journey for everybody else but the best best solution and best answer for is breast milk best? Feeding your baby is best. Period point blank. There's so many reasons why women can or cannot breastfeed. Sometimes it's a personal choice. Sometimes it's the way your breast tissue is made up. Sometimes it's your diet. Sometimes it's anything. It, it, it's so many things, your stress level, the amount of rest you have, the amount of fluid you take. There's so many factors that play onto how successful women are with breastfeeding. But the beautiful thing is we live in a society where we have resources and access to information that allows us to supply food and nutrition for our babies the best way ever. So do that. That is my advice about breastfeeding. There is no right or wrong. 
Don't let anyone make you feel guilty about your choices that you make for your baby. As long as you're making them with good intention, uh, good information, and you know, you're making healthy decisions for you and your baby, that is the most important thing. So when it comes to breastfeeding, sure, give it a try. If it doesn't work out for you, don't kill yourself. I read so many blogs and comments about mothers who cannot successfully breastfeed and they feel like failures. You are not a failure at all. Do not feel that way. If there's one thing pregnancy and motherhood has taught me and will teach you is that there is no way to expect the unexpected. You have to be willing to surrender and just go with what life gives you. But the most important thing is a happy, healthy baby and mom. So I hope that uh, helps someone out there. Um, if you guys want me to do another blog about what I'm using bottles wise and formula wise, I will gladly do so. Um, to each his own, it is your own journey to go on and find your path for yourself and your baby. Everybody's different. So yeah, I'm going to do the best I can to continue to feed Cameron the best way I know possible. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll be doing more of these. I think I'm going to get Jared in some of these for the guys. What do you think? We should do like a mommy daddy vlog. I think that'll be fun. Okay, until the next time you guys, surrender to your journey, live in your truth, and um, you're an awesome mom. You're doing great. You're an awesome mom to be. You are an awesome person. Much love, I'll see you guys soon.